Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, finally getting my video edited for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. We are still in the middle of a deep freeze here and it's basically been about minus 40 and colder Celsius, which is the same in Fahrenheit when you hit minus 40 and then it just, it's just cold. So it's been the coldest it's been since like 1929 or something like that. Anyway, anyway, it's making life difficult. So for today's cards, I am using the Simon Says Stamp Center Cut Heart Background Stamp. And it's called Center Cut because that middle heart actually pops out. I've done other videos using some of these backgrounds because there's a whole bunch to choose from. This one just really stood out to me and I just, I had to use it even though like Valentine's Day is over everything, but I just, I really like the style of this one. So I have it face up on my desk and then I have some distressed watercolor paper and I'm working on the smooth side of the watercolor paper and I use my anti-static powder tool and then I inked up the stamp with clear embossing ink and then I'm just pressing the watercolor paper very, very firmly onto this stamp, smooth side down. So that's the side I'm inking up. And I just make sure to go all around with my fingers to make sure I've impressed all of that image onto my watercolor paper. And then I'm going to coat this with uh, Simon's Detail White Embossing Powder. And I just kind of do the bottom half and then flip it around and do the other half. And trying really hard since I'm using like coating the entire background, um, just holding it with um, just on the edges with my fingers, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world if I smear any of the edges because I am going to cut this down a little bit because these are the pre-cut pieces that are four and a quarter by five and a half, but I am going to cut it down so I can mat it with some other colors of cardstock. So once I have that all coated and I showed there with using just my tweezers to remove, there was like a random stray little like fuzzy or something. So I remove that before I start heating this with my heat tool. And same thing, I kind of heat the upper half where my fingers aren't, because I've had people ask that. They're like, do you, you know, how do you manage not to burn yourself? It's hard to show in video, you know, different angles when I'm filling straight down, but I'm always well aware where my fingers are because this heat tool hurts. <laughs> if you get the heat too much near your hands or if you don't ever touch that metal end, it is incredibly hot. I'm always very, very aware of this tool when I'm using it and like, you know, letting it cool down, keeping it unplugged when I'm not in my office because it's just, it's good to be safe. It's good to be aware. So I did two backgrounds because I thought while I'm doing this, why not do more than one? And then I just have them on a cutting board here so I can kind of move this around and also to kind of protect my work surface um, because I'm making a big old mess again, which I love. I sprinkled on some Nouveau Shimmer Powder in Cherry Bomb and I do, again, do not squeeze these bottles. Don't, don't squeeze these bottles. They, you will end up with literally a pile of powder coming out. I just hold the bottle and I just tap my index finger against the bottom to get it to just sprinkle out. And then I sprayed these very, very heavily with water. I just spray them with water and kind of let them do their thing. I don't really move anything around. I just let them do their thing and either let them air dry or I'll speed it up with my heat tool. And normally I'm done. That's all I do. And then I go on and, you know, finish my card. But I was really curious. And I also really wanted to intensify the color. Like I just wanted more. So after these were dry, I lightly sprinkled on more of the shimmer powder and then sprayed it again. And then I'm trying really hard to show it on video after these were dry. But it's difficult, especially with this color. It has this actual pink shimmery sparkle to it that it's subtle and yet in real life you can see it. I just, I had a really hard time trying to pick it up in the video and in the photos, but this Cherry Bomb one does have this really, really pretty pink shimmer to it. So once my backgrounds were completely dry, I set those aside and then to make my cards, I used the Big Friend wafer dies and I die cut the friend word from Dull Pink cardstock and I die cut it three times and I'm gonna stack all three layers together with Craft Tacky glue. And then for the dots to the eyes, I left them in the scrap pieces of cardstock. That's one way I work around like adhering these little things. So I just kind of leave the base, the, the base of the eye or the base of the dot of the eye. Now I'm starting to think of like, the shoe on the leg of the flea. Anyway, <laughs> leave that in there, add a dot of glue. And then again, my reverse tweezers, you got it. I, every time I talk about these, it's like, these are a must have craft do. I literally have two pairs just in case one decides to, you know, up and walk away. Um, having multiple sets of these is just the way to go because they're the best tweezers ever. And I always link to them. 
um, when I use them with my supplies. But yeah, stacked all three of those little dots and then I'm going to adhere those to the outline that comes in this die set that I die cut from black cardstock. So I adhered the dot to the eye and then I'm going to adhere the uh, friend word to this as well with the craft tacky glue. And all of this I'm doing twice since I'm making two cards. I'm just only showing basically one on video because it's redundant. So I'm going to adhere all of this to the uh, outline. And then to finish my sentiment, I pulled out the tiny words stamp set. And I'm just going to stamp one of the phrases using Versafine Claire Nocturne ink. I'm going to stamp that twice onto some fog cardstock and then I'm just going to trim off the excess here and then I'm going to die cut this with the smallest of the sentiment labels wafer dies. So get that wafer die um, taped in place with my washi tape. I run it through my die cut machine and then use my paper cutter to trim them apart. And then I'm going to use that same fog cardstock to mat both of these shimmery watercolor backgrounds. So this time I used craft tacky glue just to adhere all my layers together. Um, my last video I was talking about using foam tape when I have pieces that are more warped. Just depends on my mood what I like to do but either like the nice thing with using like the craft tacky glue is I have a bit more time and wiggle room to make sure things are lined up. I can you know you can kind of shift things before the glue starts to set whereas with foam tape once you put it down it's it's down like you're not moving it again unless you're going to start tearing apart your cardstock. So again, it's, it depends on mood and how much dimension I want to build up. So I frame these with the fog cardstock and then I'm going to adhere the die cut friend word kind of, you know, right on top of that heart on the background. And again, I've got that little bit of wiggle room to kind of manipulate that sentiment because I realized I didn't put it straight. So kind of move that around and quickly wipe away any adhesive that might be um, peeking out around that die cut. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the second sentiment. And then once I've got both of these adhered for those little um, sentiment strips that I had stamped and die cut, I'm going to just adhere those with uh, the little Darice foam strips, which are another kind of must have tool in my adhesive drawer of literal, like I've got a drawer that's just adhesives, just foam tapes and different things like that. So these Darice foam strips are definitely must-haves. So I just put little bits of the foam strips on the back of these and I just pop these right below um, the friend die cut word. And then my card base is more um, dull pink cardstock. So uh, both my card bases are A2 size, so four and a quarter by five and a half. And for the inside of the cards, I pulled out the Autumn Greetings stamp set because I really liked the one sentiment from it and I thought it would go really nicely with this because the front says, friend, you're the best. And then um, the inside will have the sentiment from the Autumn Greetings that says, thankful for you. So I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool again and I'm going to stamp that sentiment with Simon's clear embossing ink. And I'm going to use that same white embossing powder. I could have stamped these in black, that would have looked nice too, but of course I really like how white embossing looks on color cardstock. So I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of the card really, really well. And then I'm going to um, use my white embossing powder on this. And just as a random side note, I was talking about this craft mat, like the gray, my gray work surface there. It says Imagine Crafts craft mat. And um, hopefully I'll remember. I'll link to it in my, with the rest of the supplies. I'm really liking this because it has the tiniest bit of give. So for like stamping that, I find it's just perfect. It sits on top of my glass, you know, craft mat that I like to use a lot, my glass media mat. So it's just nice. So stamping sentiments, you know, large sentiments like this, I'm getting a really good impression. So it's just, I'm really glad I got it. <laughs> so anywho, um, after I heat embossed those sentiments, I adhered my card fronts to the card bases with the craft tacky glue again, because it gives me just that little bit of wiggle room to make sure that these are lined up. And then once I have these adhered, I have to add just a few little, you know, bits of bling. So I have some Studio Cadia Onyx crystals and gray clouds crystals. And the gray ones were perfect because they're almost the exact same color as Simon's Fog cardstock. So I love when things are just like, you know, they just match up perfectly. So I'm going to kind of spread these out on both of these card fronts and then I'm going to adhere them into place with the craft tacky glue, just picking them up with my jewel picker putting down a dab of that little bit of adhesive and then pressing that into place. So once I get that done, that is going to finish off the cards. And then as a final 
note I show at the end. Um, I paired these with black envelopes. I thought that would be really, really nice. And for the black envelopes, I just, I have a personal stamp that I stamp with uh, my address that I stamp in picked raspberry distress oxide ink. And then to write to the recipient, like their address, I just use a gel pen that, you know, shows up really nice. So it just kind of ties everything together super nice. So I will link to those envelopes as well. I'll also link to the color challenge on my blog. You can check that out below if you're interested along with the supply list and all that. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.